Hi, I'm Andy from the South Yorkshire Demoscopy Academy, where we help you become the great primary care demoscopist you were born to be. In this video, I'm going to present four of my patients with rare types of angiomas. Two will be good, one will be bad, and one will be just downright nasty. Let's jump in. Training a primary care demoscopist for every general practice. Can you spot the ugly duckling on this 25-year-old patient's back? What's an ugly duckling, you ask? Good question. In demoscopy, we often talk about an ugly duckling. If you don't know the original ugly duckling story, it was first published by a Danish author, Hans Christian Andersen, in November 1843. In demoscopy, something that stands out as being different from all the other skin lesions on a patient's body, we call it an ugly duckling. It jumps out at you and warrants special attention. That's because skin cancers often present as something different. His partner had noticed it four months previously, so asked him to come and let us check it out for him. Note he has over 100 plus moles on his body, but no family history of melanomas. It looks black, is raised and dongula, and knowing the trunk is the most common location for malignant melanomas in men, had me worried. What do you do? You refer him to it, Wade, via the skin cancer secondary care pathway because you don't want him as a melanoma. Stop! No, you don't. You're learning demoscopy now. So what do you do? You put your dermoscope on and this is what you see. Press pause and think how you might describe this skin lesion. Then unpause to read my attempt. This is a well demarcated six millimeter papule with dark red and purple areas or lacoons set within a blue white stroma and a collar of erythema skin around the lesion. Of note is a dark red clot different to the others at the three o'clock location. This was early in my dermoscopic career and while I suspected it was a capillary hemangioma, part because there was no brown and no vessels going across the surface, I had never seen one look like this. Rule 101 for primary care demoscopy is this, if in doubt, refer it out. I send these pictures for advice and guidance to our local secondary care dermatologists. They had a look at the pictures and they wanted to see him. They cut it out and histology confirmed it was just a capillary hemangioma. I learned the following from this patient. I'm glad I have a dermoscope. Capillary hemangiomas can vary in depth of colour from bright red, blue, purple to black, all within one angioma. An erythematous flare around them isn't uncommon and is nothing to worry about. This was one of the good angiomas. Moving on, patient two. This 43-year-old lady presenting having noticed approximately six months ago this four millimetre hard papule on her right thigh. It was catching on her clothes and irritating her. She didn't think it had grown recently and there was no family or personal history of skin cancer. Here's the demoscopy. Describe what you see before seeing my attempt, which now follows. This papule on demoscopy is symmetrical, with some central light scale overlying some indistinct blue-purple areas with some red homogeneous areas. It has a ring at the periphery of radial hairpin vessels surrounded by a white keratin halo. News just in! In demoscopy, we blather on a lot about blood vessel patterns, and that is because of their associations. They are a key component to helping you narrow down the likely diagnosis. Hairpin, or loop vessels, are vascular loops frequently twisted. Some people say I'm twisted, but that's just my children talking. And often surrounded by a whitish halo. They can be large or small. They suggest a keratinizing lesion, i.e. one producing keratin. The six most common keratinizing lesions you'll see in primary care that contain these hairpin vessels are severe keratoses, viral warts, and introducing the all new Fab Four of actinic keratosis, Bowen's, squamous cell cancer, and keratoacanthoma. Don't worry, we'll cover these in other videos. Here's my hairpin to illustrate an important point about these vessels. How this vessel looks to you down a dermoscope will depend on its orientation to the surface of the skin. If presenting horizontally to you like this, it will be a nice line. But watch, it shortens to become a dot when perpendicular to you and the surface of the skin. And if lots of these are together, they give what's called a frog spawn pattern, common in warts but also seborrheic keratoses. Now, back to your regular program. Outside this, there is slight erythema with dot vessels within. So, what is it? Mainly because of this symmetry, I felt it was benign, so I didn't refer her. She wanted it removing as it was irritating her. So two months later, I removed it. When she came in for surgery, I took new photographs and here they are. How it has changed. Any more thoughts on what it is now? Gone are the hairpin vessels. Some scale remains, but it's clear that there are variable coloured clots or lacoons. Red, blue, purple and perhaps black. 
the blue-white stroma remains. The histology ultimately showed this was an angiokeratoma. She was happy with the scar and I was happy to have made the right decision. Moving on to patient three. This 81-year-old with this bleeding finger lesion called me from A&E. It had been growing over two weeks and had started to bleed and would not stop. She had an eight-hour wait to be seen in A&E, so phoned our surgery. I was on call and she was able kindly to send me this photograph. And knowing what it was, I asked her to come straight down to see me in clinic. Do you know what it is? It's a pyogenic granuloma. A bit of a misnomer, as this is not due to infection, rather a benign vascular growth, often due to trauma, but a range of causes can trigger them. Usually as here, they are painless red fleshy nodules, often between five to 10 millimeters, and they grow rapidly over a few weeks. They easily bleed on minor trauma, the finger and face being the most common locations. Here's the demoscopy, which here shows just a white homogenous background with a few fine dot and perhaps short vessels. Until recently, I used to refer these on the two-week wait cancer care pathway because one, they're a nuisance as they bleed easily, and secondly, just rarely an amyotic melanoma can look like this. Demoscopy isn't wholly diagnostic, but isn't usually needed for diagnosis. However, for every one amelanotic melanoma presenting, there will be around 199 pyogenic granulomas. Did you know that you can now treat these with salt very successfully? That's correct, salt. There are, however, two caveats to doing this. One, the bleeding should settle down within 24 hours, and for this lady it did, and within two to three weeks, it should have healed. In those where these things fail, consider that two week wait cancer referral. This was the first person with a pyogenic granuloma I treated with salt. And here are the photos on follow up after two weeks. It continued to resolve, leaving no scar. And in 12 months, it hasn't recurred. So when you next see a pyogenic granuloma, think of salt. Finally, patient four. This 92 year old gentleman was on warfarin for a metal heart valve. He'd noticed a small red dot on his right temple, perhaps two months before he presented to us. How would you describe this lesion? I thought it was 12 millimeters in diameter, a red raw looking center with a couple of dark areas at the 11 and two o'clock positions. A surrounding bruise was evident without any trauma and there was no pain. Demoscopy showed a bleeding, slightly scaly lesion with a few well demarcated blue black areas with it. With its rapid growth, I referred him on the two week wait cancer pair pathway. A biopsy showed that it was an angiosarcoma. These cancers are rare with only around 160 cases in England per year. I'll probably never see another thankfully, but you might. Symptoms of an angiocarcoma include an enlarging bruise, a blue black nodule or non-healing ulceration. Therefore, this bruise around the center is part of the tumor. So whilst it looks like it's just 12 millimeters, it's actually 50 millimeters wide. His warfarin was a bit of a red herring for this bruise and the extent of the angiosarcoma was much larger than I thought. Angiosarcomas occurring on the head and neck in elderly people are one of the most common forms of cutaneous angiosarcomas. Indeed, this one was large and extensive. He was only offered palliative care and died from this cancer six months later. I hope you found these cases useful to perhaps expand your understanding of a variety of angiomas that can present in your patients. Some, such as the angiokeratoma, are benign. Some, such as the pyogenic granuloma, are a nuisance. And some are just plain ugly, like this rare angiosarcoma. Training a primary care demoscopist for every general practice. I'm going to colour one of these tomatoes representing angiomas black. I'm going to put it on the shelf behind me to remind us that not all angiomas are capillary hemangiomas. If you found this video content of value to you, please thumbs up or comment down below. Until next time.